book. Ah! Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Wait, are you blushing? What would I have to blush about? You tell me. It's of no interest to you, I'm certain. It's a book. I can see that. It's one of Varric's tales. Swords and Shields, the latest chapter. So you like to read? What's wrong with that? It's frivolous. There are more important things for me to do. That's just her favorite. Nobody asked you, Tavinta. <laughs> I couldn't finish the last one you lent me. I actually feel dumber for having tried. It's literature. Smutty literature. Whatever you do, don't tell Varric. Why not? I think Varric would be pleased to have another fan. Pleased? Yes, that's one word for it. They're terrible. And magnificent. And this one ends in a cliffhanger. I know Varric is working on the next. He must be. Pretend you don't know this about me. Battling the demons of paperwork. That's a fight nobody walks away from clean. You have no idea the number of times I've almost been killed by bills of lading. I've been meaning to come talk to you anyhow. I never officially joined the Inquisition. I don't know how to do this uh, disciplehood thing. I'm a businessman. Never really followed a chosen one before. I don't need a disciple. I need a friend. If you knew how intimidating you are, you wouldn't make it sound so simple. You just don't know what you are to the people out there. The Herald of Andraste is a symbol bigger than any of us. What am I to you, then? Oh, none of this shit makes any sense to me. Is this the end of the world? Did Andraste send you through the breach? I have no idea. You heard the crowd singing after Haven was attacked? Please don't tell me you're going to burst into song now. Don't worry, I'm not that cruel. I should probably get back to work. Unless, uh, you up for a game of Wicked Grace? Tell me the truth, Varric. Do you actually think I was sent by Andraste? Oh, shit. This is going to be awkward. I guess I do. Either you're guided by the hand of some higher power, or you have the worst luck. I wouldn't have pegged you as an Andrastian. It's a great story. It's got heroism, love, betrayal, and random musical numbers. What's not to like? I don't have a nug in this race. It could be bullshit, it could be true. I'll never know. But I like the idea that maybe you could save the world with a song. Let's be realistic. It could be both. You've got a point. Look at all the shit that's happened to you. You were saved from the explosion that leveled a mountaintop and fell out of the Fade, you traveled through time, faced down one of the ancient magisters who started the Blights, had a mountain fall on you, and lived. One of those things would be impossible. All of them together? That's a miracle. So, on the basis of my extraordinarily bad luck, you think I'm Andraste's herald? If you know the story of Andraste, you know that bad luck is sort of her thing. Cassandra is waiting for the next issue of Swords and Shields. I must have heard that wrong. It sounded like you just said that Cassandra read my books. What's so surprising about that? Well, you have met Cassandra, haven't you? Wait, did you say the romance serial? Oh, she'll be waiting for a while then. I haven't finished it and wasn't planning to. That book is easily the worst I've ever written. The last issue barely sold enough to pay for the ink. Well, Cassandra seems to be hooked on it. And I honestly thought a hole in the sky was the weirdest thing that could happen. So, you want me to finish writing the latest issue of my worst serial for Cassandra? Oh, that's such a terrible idea. I have to do it. On one condition, I get to be there when you give her the book. You've got a deal. I'll get to work then. You know, the fact that the book is terrible just makes it more worthwhile somehow. Ah, good. We're not drinking alone. How you doing, creme de la creme? Your worship. I'm so glad he has someone new to hit with that joke. 
Do you prefer Krem or Cremesius? Krem's faster, but Chief's nicknames usually end up sticking. Hey, when I was growing up, my name was just this series of numbers. We all give each other nicknames under the Kuhn. They ever wear shirts under the Kuhn, Chief? Or do they just run around binding their breasts like that? It's a harness, Krem. Yes, for your pillowy man bosoms. Let me know if you need help binding. You could really chisel something out of that overstuffed look. Wait, are you... I didn't realize. You didn't. Well, great. Now we can all talk about it. In Kunadar, Krem would be an Akunathlak. That's what we call someone born one gender, but living like another. And Kunari don't treat those... Akun people any differently than a real man. They are real men. Just like you are. Maybe your people aren't so bad after all. Don't get your hopes up, Krem. We still come down hard on the back talk. <laughs> anyway, here's the rest of the chargers. Or what's left of the rest. A lot of them went looking for stronger drinks. We've got Rocky and Skinner there. And over there are Stitches, Dalish, <laughs> and Grim. Crazy bunch of assholes, but they're mine. Were you born on the surface, or are you from Orzammar? Orzammar. I got exiled. Stupid noble crap. Also, I accidentally blew up a bit of the shape rate. Rocky's one of our best sappers. He can take down enemy fortifications faster than a golem. I'm also working on my own version of Kunari Black Powder. I've almost got it. Yeah, you really don't. Why aren't you with your clan? Our Keeper thought I should see the world a little. Dalish don't have Templars, so they can't have too many mages in a clan at once. Now, sir, you know I'm not a mage. That'd make me an apostate. You carry a staff, Dalish. It's a bow. A bow with a giant glowing crystal at the tip? Yes, it's for aiming. Old elven trick you wouldn't understand. I take it you're the company healer. Yes. First time I ever picked up a sword was when the Blight hit Ferelden. Never put it back down. He makes a potion that'll put you right back on your feet after even the toughest fight. It tastes terrible, though. That's because it's a poultice, sir. You're not supposed to drink it. So, how'd you join the Chargers? Killed some people. Skinner didn't take kindly to nobles testing their new swords on the elves in her alienage. Bull took me in. Now I get paid to kill Shams. This is actually really good behavior for her. She's not marking her territory or anything. Grim, is it? Hmm. Grim doesn't talk much. I'm pretty sure he's the lost king of some small country. Or chieftain. Something like that. Hmm. You've got a good company, Bull. Ah, we do all right. No man can beat the Chargers, cause we'll hit you where it hurts. Unless you know a tavern with loose hearts and looser skirts. For every bloody battlefield will gladly raise a cup. No matter what tomorrow holds, our horns be pointing up. <laughs> Thanks for coming by, boss. Glad you could meet some of my team. What are you doing? Listening. Eyes rough, jangling armor hurts my ears, back aching, fingers too clumsy for knots. Wind cool like Aunt Eloise's pond, lips scalded as I sip, warmth blossoms, first kiss in the barn, what was his name? Tin jangle as the blood spills, Pierre's wrapped body on the wagon to the chantry. Five more minutes, my fault. Can you listen to anyone's mind like you did hers? No, they have to need me. Pain, fear, sadness, guilt, anger, hurt. Things I can fix. Can you do something for her? Yes. It's okay. Nothing you did mattered. What? Who are you? 
They lie there, and sometimes they die, just like Pierre. You can't save them. I don't... I don't know who you are. Wait. That didn't work. Let me try again. You'll forget me in a minute. What are you going to do? Make her forget me. Then do it again, the right way. You can't save all of them. What? Like Pierre getting sick after you snuck out to Aunt Eloise's pond. You want it to be your fault, so there's a reason and it's not so frightening. But there is no reason. Pierre just got sick. The soldier was never going to live. It wasn't your fault. So you walk into their lives, make them feel better, and they just forget you? Yes. It's better to help and then be gone. If I stay, it can be frightening. For you or for them? Yes. Thank you for letting me help her. It's not how a person would do it. But it helped. That's what matters. Anything interesting? A letter regarding Felix, Alexius's son. He went to the Magisterium, stood on the Senate floor and told them of you. A glowing testimonial, I'm informed. No news on the reaction, but everyone back home is talking. Felix always was as good as his word. Was? He's dead. The Blight caught up with him. Are you all right? He was ill, and thus on borrowed time anyhow. That doesn't mean you can't regret his death. I know. Felix used to sneak me treats from the kitchens when I was working late in his father's study. Don't get into trouble on my behalf, I tell him. I like trouble, he'd say. Tevinter could use more mages like him. Those who put the good of others above themselves. Were the two of you... Felix and I? What an odd question. No. I had no intention of abusing Alexius's hospitality by seducing his son. Not that I've been proper my whole life by any means. It wasn't like that. Even in illness, Felix was the best of us. With him around, you knew things could be better. You make it sound like he was a better person than you. What a mad thing to say. Few people are better than I. Very well, a better person, clearly, not nearly as handsome. Thankfully, Felix wasn't the only decent sort kicking around Thedas. My Lady Inquisitor, it's good of you to speak with me. I have news regarding one of your companions, the Tevinto. Mm. Has Dorian done something wrong? No, thankfully. It's nothing like that. I have been in contact with his family. House Pavas, out of Carinas. Are you familiar with them? He's mentioned his family. They don't appear to be on good terms. Yes. I believe you're correct. The family sent a letter describing the estrangement from their son and pleading for my aid. They've asked to arrange a meeting quietly without telling him. They fear it's the only way he'll come. If you think I'm going to trick Dorian into meeting his family, Oh, I feared you might say that. The family will send a retainer to meet the young man at the Red Cliff Tavern, to take him onward. If he truly does not wish this reunion, he can always end the matter there. I pray you change your mind, Inquisitor. Perhaps their letter will persuade you. If there is any chance of success in this, it behooves us to act. I know my son. What my father knows of me would barely fill a thimble. This is so typical. I'm willing to bet this retainer is a henchman hired to knock me on the head and drag me back to Tevinta. You think your father would actually do that? No, although I wouldn't put it past him. Let's go. Let's meet this so-called family retainer. If it's a trap, we escape and kill everyone. You're good at that. If it's not, 
I send the man back to my father with the message that he can stick his alarm in his wit's end. There seems to be bad blood between you and your family. <laughs> Interesting turn of phrase. But you're correct. They don't care for my choices, nor I for theirs. Because you wouldn't get married? Because you left? That too. Let's go meet this retainer then. I wonder how much my father paid this man to wait around just in case I showed. <sighs> we'll find out soon enough. Uh-oh. Nobody's here. This doesn't bode well. Dorian. Father. So the whole story about the family retainer was just, what? A smokescreen? Then you were told. I apologize for the deception, Inquisitor. I never intended for you to be involved. Of course not. Magister Parvis couldn't come to Skyhold and be seen with the dread Inquisitor. What would people think? What is this exactly, Father? Ambush? Kidnapping? A warm family reunion? <sighs> this is how it has always been. You went through all of this to get Dorian here. Talk to him. Yes, Father. Talk to me. Let me hear how mystified you are by my anger. Dorian, there's no need to. I prefer the company of men. My father disapproves. That's... A big concern in Tevinta, then. Only if you're trying to live up to an impossible standard. Every Tevinta family is intermarrying to distill the perfect mage, perfect body, perfect mind. The perfect leader. It means every perceived flaw, every aberration is deviant and shameful. It must be hidden. Your father might be here to reach out. You could give him a chance. Let's just go. Dorian, please. If you'll only listen to me. Why? So you can spout more convenient lies? He taught me to hate blood magic. The resort of the weak mind. Those are his words. But what was the first thing you did when your precious heir refused to play pretend for the rest of his life? You tried to change me. I only wanted what was best for you. You wanted the best for you! Your fucking legacy! Anything for that! Don't leave it like this, Dorian. You'll never forgive yourself. Tell me why you came. If I knew, I would drive you to the Inquisition. You didn't! I joined the Inquisition because it's the right thing to do. Once, I had a father who would have known that. Once, I had a son who trusted me. A trust I betrayed. I only wanted to talk to him, to hear his voice again. To ask him to forgive me. He says we're alike. Too much pride. Once I would have been overjoyed to hear him say that. Now I'm not certain. I don't know if I can forgive him. Are you all right? No, not really. Thank you for bringing me out there. It wasn't what I expected, but it's something. Maker knows what you must think of me now, after that whole display. I think you're very brave. Brave. It's not easy to abandon tradition and walk your own path. At any rate, time to drink myself into a stupor. It's been that sort of day. Join me sometime, if you've a mind. Something wrong with your tea? It is tea. I detest this stuff. 
But this morning, I need to shake the dreams from my mind. I may also need a favor. You just have to ask. One of my oldest friends has been captured by mages, forced into slavery. I heard the cry for help as I slept. When your friend was captured, how did he... she... It. It? My friend is a spirit of wisdom. Unlike the spirits clamoring to enter our world through the rifts, it was dwelling quite happily in the Fade. It was summoned against its will, and wants my help to gain its freedom and return to the Fade. I thought spirits wanted to find their way into this world. Some do, certainly. Just as many Orlesian peasants wish they could journey to exotic Ravain. But not everyone wants to go to Ravain. My friend is an explorer seeking lost wisdom and reflecting it. It would happily discuss philosophy with you, but it had no wish to come here physically. Do you have any idea what the mages want with your friend? No. It knows a great deal of lore and history, but a mage could learn that simply by speaking to it in the Fade. It is possible that they seek information it does not wish to give, and intend to torture it. All right. Let's go get your friend. Thank you. I got a sense of my friend's location before I awoke. I'll mark it on our map. Inquisitor, welcome to the Exalted Plains, a place with a long and bloody history. Even now, the region is volatile. This was a front in the Civil War. This is where the Elves made their last stand, isn't it? Ah, you studied the Dales. Yes. When offered a chance to lay down their arms and surrender, they refused. That will be all. Thank you. With the Rifts and the Undead, the Arlesians have lost ground. Most have been driven back to their forts. We have to stabilize the region, allowing the Imperial Army to reestablish its presence. Good luck, Your Worship. You'll need it. My friend. Ah! The mages turned your friend into a demon. Yes. You said it was a spirit of wisdom, not a fighter. A spirit becomes a demon when denied its original purpose. So they summoned it for something so opposed to its own nature that it was corrupted. Fighting. Let us ask them. A mage! You're not with the bandits? Do you have any lyrium potions? Most of us are exhausted. We've been fighting that demon. You summoned that demon! Except it was a spirit of wisdom at the time! You made it kill! You twisted it against its purpose! I, I, I understand how it might be confusing to someone who has not studied demons, but after you help us, I can... We are not here to help you. We came to help your friend. Any way to do that now that it's a demon? You cannot befriend a demon. However amicable it might appear, it must... Shut up. You summoned it to protect you from the bandits. I... Yes. You bound it to obedience, then commanded it to kill. That is when it turned. The summoning circle. We break it, we break the binding. No orders to kill, no conflict with its nature, no demon. What? The binding is the only thing keeping the demon from killing us. Whatever it was before, it is a monster now. Inquisitor, please! I've studied rituals like this. I should be able to disrupt the binding quickly. Thank you. We must hurry! I heard what it said. It was right. You did help it. No. I must endure. Let me know if I can help. You already have. All that remains now is them. Thank you. We would not have risked the summoning, but the roads are too dangerous to travel unprotected. You tortured and killed my friend. 
We didn't know it was just the spirit. The, the book said it could help us. Damn them all. I need some time alone. I will meet you back at Skyhold. Inquisitor. How are you, Solas? It hurts. It always does. But I will survive. Thank you for coming back. You were a true friend. You did everything you could to help. I could hardly abandon you now. Where did you go? I found a quiet spot and went to sleep. I visited the place in the Fade where my friend used to be. It's empty. But there are stirrings of energy in the void. Someday something new may grow there. What happens when a spirit dies? It isn't the same for mortals. The energy of spirits returns to the Fade. If the idea giving the spirit form is strong, or if the memory has shaped other spirits, it may someday rise again. You're saying your friend might come back? No, not really. A spirit's natural state is peaceful semi-existence. It is rare to be able to reflect reality. Something similar may reform one day, but it might have a different personality. It would likely not remember me. It would not be the friend I knew. The next time you have to mourn, you don't need to be alone. It's been so long since I could trust someone. I know. I'll work on it. And thank you. This... this is just... it's something to keep their hands busy. I'm grateful you tracked me down when you did. As exciting as Wandering the Woodlands was, this is better. It's good to be part of something so important. Something that could change things. The Grey Wardens are huge and important. You're part of that. True, but without a blight on the horizon, everything the Wardens do feels like waiting. This, the Inquisition, is what matters now. And I'm grateful to be a part of it. You are who you choose to follow. Someone told me that once. Took me years to understand what he meant. There's wisdom in that. It was a Chevalier who said those words to me. A powerful man, but never without honor. A true knight. We met as competitors in the Grand Tourney. He left me with that advice before we parted. Put aside his own ambitions to help me win the melee. I don't think I ever thanked him. What is this Grand Tourney? You've never heard of it. The Grand Tourney of the Free Marches. It's a spectacle. Song, dance, wine, every amusement you can imagine. <laughs> but the greatest part is the contest of arms. Prove yourself in the Grand Tourney. And you can make your fortune. How did he help you? There were a hundred men on the field, each one fighting for himself. The knight and I had forged an alliance. It was just the two of us, and we took all comers. The goal? Down as many opponents as possible. He always let me deliver the final blow. That was generous of him. He said I stood to gain everything, while he'd lose nothing. When it was over, he offered to mentor me, to teach me to become a chevalier like him. And I, young and stupid, turned him down flat. I just won the melee at the Grand Tourney. I didn't need him. I should have gone with him. Perhaps things could have been different. You're here now. A Grey Warden. It worked out. I suppose it did, didn't it? But I'm older. Hopefully wiser. And I think I've chosen the right person to walk with. Oh. I... What's going on here? It seems the revered mother is concerned about my undue influence over you. It is just concern. Your worship, you must know how this looks. You might need to spell it out, my dear. This man is of Tevinto. His presence at your side. The rumors alone. What's wrong with him being from Tevinto, specifically? I'm fully aware that not everyone from the Imperium is the same. How kind of you to notice. Yet still, you bow to the opinion of the masses. The opinion of the masses is based on centuries of evidence. What would you have me tell them? The truth? The truth is I do not know you, and neither do they. Thus, these rumors will continue. Oh. I'd like to hear what these rumors are exactly. I... could not repeat them, your worship. Repeat them? So you've shared them before. I... see. 
I meant no disrespect, Inquisitor. Only to ask after this man's intentions. If you feel he is without ulterior motive, then I humbly beg forgiveness of you both. Well, that's something. She didn't get to you, did she? No. It takes more to get to me than thinly veiled accusations. You don't think she'll do anything? Do what? Yours is the good opinion I care about, not hers. I should ask, do the rumors bother you? I wish they wouldn't disparage you. They don't know you. <sighs> they know you even less than they know me. Perhaps it's odd to say, but... I think of you as a friend, Inquisitor. I have precious few friends. I didn't think to find one here. I... Don't speak. I detest confessions. And I'd like to get this over with. Allow me to say I'll stand beside you. Against Corypheus, my countryman, or spurious rumor. So long as you'll have me. Ah, come on, Krim. I'm working my ass off trying to get you to see that move. You still got plenty of ass left, Chief. Uh, your worship. Glad you came by. I got a letter from my contacts in the Ben Hasrath. Already verified it with red. Do you want to discuss this alone? Not like I was hiding it from my boys. Besides, right now, I need to hit something. You know they've got training dummies, Chief. The training dummy might actually defend itself against the shield bash. Anyway, the Ben Hasrath letter. What did the letter say? The Ben Hasrath have been reading my reports. They don't like Corypheus or his Venatori. And they really don't like Red Lyrium. They're ready to work with us. With you, boss. The Kunari and the Inquisition joining forces. That could be a powerful alliance. My people have never made a full-blown alliance with a foreign power before. This would be a big step. They found a massive Red Lyrium shipping operation out on the coast. They wanted us to hit it together. Talked about bringing in one of their dreadnoughts. Always wanted to see one of those big war ships in action. Did you see that? Go get some water. They're worried about tipping the smugglers, so no army. My chargers, you, maybe some backup. What does this alliance really get us? They wouldn't use the word alliance if they didn't mean it. Naval power. More Ben Hasrath reports. Kunari soldiers pointed at the Venatori. It could do a lot of good. You don't seem entirely happy about this. No, I'm good. It's... Uh... I'm used to them being... over there. It's been a while. I thought the Kunari wanted to extend their reach to the whole world. Yeah. Just didn't think I'd see it. Look, the Kun answers a lot of questions. It's a good life for a lot of people. But it's a big change, and a lot of folks here wouldn't do so well under that kind of life. I guess it's not like we're converting. This is just us joining forces against Corypheus. On that front, I think we're good. I think the Inquisition could use some help from the Kunari. Good. I'll pass on word to Colin and Red. We can set up the meeting whenever you're ready. All right. Our Kunari contact should be here to meet us. He is? Good to see you again, Hisrad. Gat! Last I heard, you were still in Saharan. They finally decided I'd calm down enough to go back into the world. Boss, this is Gat. We work together in Saharan. It's a pleasure to meet you, Inquisitor. Hisrad's reports say you're doing good work. Iron Bull's name is Hisrad. Under the Kuhn, we use titles, not names. My title was Hisrad, because I was assigned to secret work. You can translate it as Keeper of Illusions, or... Liar. It means liar. Well, you don't have to say it like that. I look forward to working together. Hopefully this will help both our peoples. Tevinter is dangerous enough without the influence of this Venatori cult. If this new form of Lyrium helps them seize power in Tevinter, the war with Kunandar could get worse. With this stuff, the Vince could make their slaves into an army of magical freaks. We could lose Sahara and see a giant Tevinter army come marching back down here. The Ben Hasrath agree. That's why we're here. Our Dreadnought is safely out of view and out of range of any Venatori mages on shore. 
We'll need to eliminate the Venatori, then signal the Dreadnought so it can come in and take out the smuggler ship. If it's dangerous for the Dreadnought close to shore, why not attack when the smugglers reach open water? Any decent smuggling ship can outrun a Dreadnought on open water. We need to catch them close to shore. I could have crushed any Venatori resistance with the Inquisition's main forces. Why not use them? Because then the Venatori would have seen you coming and run. They'd schedule a new shipment for later, and our spies might not know when or where. This is risky, yes. But it's our best chance to destroy the shipping operation permanently. What do you think, Bull? Mm, don't know. I've never liked covering a dreadnought run. Too many ways for crap to go wrong. If our scouts underestimate enemy numbers, we're dead. If we can't lock down the Venatori mages, the ship is dead. It's risky. Riskier than letting Red Lyrium into Minrathos? Let's go hold up our end of this bargain, then. My agent suggested two possible locations the Venatori may be camped to guard the shore. There, and there. We'll need to split up and hit both at once. I'll come with you, boss. Krim can lead the charges. Let me fill him in. Come by when you're ready to move. Once they're down, send up your signal. That'll let the Dreadnought know it's safe to come in. Understood, Chief. Remember, you're gonna want a volley to start, but don't get suckered into fighting at range. They've got mages. It's all right. We've got a mage of our own. I'm not a mage! Get in close and take their enchanter down before he takes over the battlefield. He'll be dead before he knows it. Just... pay attention, all right? The Vince want this Red Lyrium shipment bad. Yes, I know. Thanks, Mother. Kunari don't have mothers, remember? We'll be fine, Chief. All right, Chargers. Horns up! Horns up! Ready whenever you are, boss. We're clear, Gat. Right. Signaling the Dreadnought. Chargers already sent theirs up. See them down there. I knew you gave them the easier job. There's the Dreadnought. That brings back memories. <laughs> nice one. Crap. The Chargers can't stand against that kind of force. No, they can't. Your men need to hold that position, Bull. They do that. They're dead. And if they don't, the Venatori retake it and the Dreadnought is dead. You'd be throwing away an alliance between the Inquisition and the Canari. You'd be declaring yourself Talvashov. With all you've given the Inquisition, half the Ben Hasra think you've betrayed us already. I stood up for you, Hisrad. I told them you would never become Talvashov. They're my men. I know, but you need to do what's right, Hisrad, for this alliance and for the Kuhn. Call the retreat. Don't! They are falling back. All these years, Hisrad, and you throw away all that you are. For what? For this? For them? His name is Iron Bull. I suppose it is. No way they'll get out of range. Won't be long now. Bull, when the Dreadnought sinks... Sinks? Canary Dreadnoughts don't sink. <sighs> Come on. Let's get back to my boys. Hey, boss. Inquisitor. It is my duty to inform you that there will be no alliance between our peoples. Nor will you be receiving any more Ben Hasrath reports from your Talvishoth ally. You under orders to kill me, Gat? No. The Ben Hasrath have already lost one good man. They'd rather not lose two. So much for that. I'm proud of you, Bull. <laughs> Thanks, boss. You're late. Sorry, Chief. 
Still sore from fighting off all those events. Good to see you, Inquisitor. How did the Chargers come out of the fight? Just fine. Thanks to you and the Chief, we had plenty of time to fall back. The Chief's even breaking open a cask of chasing sack mead for the Chargers tonight. Damn it, Krem. That's the kind of thing you don't have to mention to the Inquisitor. Sorry, Chief. Ah, forget it. You're doing fine. Got a location for a stash. Hopefully something nice for my trouble. Well, your trouble. Just let me know when you're ready to head out. Be sure to bring your empty pockets. Who's putting up the reward for this? I don't know. Sometimes it's past the hat. Sometimes it's I lifted this from Master's vault. Doesn't matter, does it? It's job done. Time to get what we're owed. Wait, this is weird. What? I was expecting a village or something. The people that leave me stuff don't trek out to places like this. Give me a city and I'll give you a tour, but surprise, surprise, I don't know stupid woods or ruins. What's that? Don't hurt me. Harmond made me do it. Quiet yourself. We're here to help. Help? Had enough help. I complain about a fight and suddenly I'm an agent or something. You were the one with the rumor out of Vachel. My friend. You're her. You're the one he's waiting for. It's her. She's here. Red Jenny. Oh, oh, oh. Hold on. This is a tragic misunderstanding. Let's all sheathe our swords. You walk out, and we'll conduct this like business. There. That wasn't so hard, was it? We identified the confusion, and we worked past it. I'm Lord Pell Harmond. I do hope, Inquisitor, that you continue to respond to reason. After all, your choice of company is hardly virtuous. Freaking user you are. Another noble prick who punches down. We're the same, you and I. Well, that is overstating it. You are... Nothing like me, but we both need people. You want to talk now, but Sarah is my ally. You attacked her friends. Come now. You know how much her meddling cost me? Because apparently you were complicit. Honestly, previous to this very moment, I thought you'd also been tricked by these red jennies. Despite your foreign nature, as Inquisitor, you are a social peer. I attacked them on behalf of us both. Ask Biscuit. <sighs> Quiet. Inquisitor, Herald, I don't want to be your enemy. I'm barely invested in being hers. If you are willing to recognize an opportunity, we could be exceptional partners. The servants you killed, they did nothing except talk about what was going on. You killed my contacts, my friends. That is entirely true. Well, that should be that then. You're the one who empowered them, made their complaints a threat. Perhaps you should have warned them about talking to you. Stop talking to him. Really, just stop it. Uh, now, what was the point of that? <laughs> Mother, puss bucket, friggin' bastard, shite bag, piss face. Eating your lop eared son of an arse nut. Rots Sarah! A piece of Sarah! Ugh. What? He's done. You're done. Relax. It's over. He said. Friends, Inquisitor. Better than his lot any day. Hey, you. Know what? Thanks. Felt good to stomp the smile off that pisshead's face. It doesn't go bad like that often, yeah? But when it does, they deserve it. Risky. But keep it within the Inquisition and I'll support you. Even though this puckered around us? Even so. Well, good then. Right, what do you mean? Because I am really not used to that acceptance thing you're doing right there. We'll have some differences, but I want to be one of your friends. You're pretty big to be one of my contacts. Important, I mean, not fat. But all right, Inquisitor. You're on my good side. We'll see if it lasts. As leader of the Inquisition, you... 
There's something I must tell you. Whatever it is, I'm willing to listen. Right. Thank you. Lyrium grants Templars our abilities, but it controls us as well. Those cut off suffer. Some go mad, others die. We have secured a reliable source of Lyrium for the Templars here. But I no longer take it. You stopped? When I joined the Inquisition. It's been months now. Cullen, if this can kill you... It hasn't yet. After what happened in Kirkwall, I couldn't. I will not be bound to the Order or that life any longer. Whatever the suffering, I accept it. But I would not put the Inquisition at risk. I've asked Cassandra to... watch me. If my ability to lead is compromised, I will be relieved from duty. Are you in pain? I can endure it. Thank you for telling me. I respect what you're doing. Thank you, Inquisitor. The Inquisition's army must always take priority. Should anything happen, I will defer to Cassandra's judgment. I've found where the Red Templars come from. Theronfall Redoubt. The Knights were fed Red Lyrium until they turned into monsters. Samson took over after their corruption was complete. How do you know Samson? He was a Templar in Kirkwall, until he was expelled from the Order. I knew he was an addict, but this... Red Lyrium is nothing like the Lyrium given by the Chantry. Its power comes with a terrible madness. The Red Templars swarming Haven were proof enough. We cannot allow them to gain strength. Are you angrier at Corypheus or Samson? I don't know. Samson at least should know better. And what else did Lady Forsythia say? That she'd rather drown herself than help the Inquisition. Anything else? She said she'd have us flogged alive if we allied with her brother. That does sound like her. Cheer up, Josie. We at least have her attention. You always do find the brighter side of things. We are in the midst of cementing an alliance with Lady Forsythia of Nevara, your worship. It's become a somewhat delicate task. Can I do anything to help negotiations? Thank you, but I believe I have matters in hand. I dissuaded her from sending soldiers when she learned we'd struck an accord with a brother she's feuding with. Lady Forsythia simply employs a colorful manner of speech. Dealing with so many demanding, strong-willed people can't be easy. It's no less intense than my days at court, Inquisitor, I assure you. But I confess I do miss my staff from the Embassy in Antiva. It was always useful to discuss the day's visitors with I have time if you'd like to review things with me. I wouldn't wish to impose. If it were imposing, I wouldn't have offered. Well, I admit, there are a few potential alliances it would be good to discuss. Right on the parlor floor. In front of everyone at the soiree. Who does such a thing in front of their guests? <laughs> The Duke of Kellington, apparently. And then there's calls lurking. It frightens our guests half to death. Lord Genar still won't respond to our letters. And Sarah, can she not find a single overshirt with that mustard taint on it? Then there's Dorian. The man refuses to take anything seriously unless it suits its whim. Not to mention... Oh, oh goodness. Have we been here an hour already? It went by so quickly, I didn't even notice. You're far too polite. I didn't intend to go on for so long. You must think me quite the gossip. No one else here has your experience, Josephine. Or your stories. I'll try to curtail their length next time. But I leave feeling less troubled than I have in weeks. You wanted to see me? Yeah, yeah, my soul's dust. Yours is scattered all over the ground, though, so... Ah. Sorry, boss. I thought I might need backup. Guess I'm not even worth sending professionals for. You knew the assassins were coming? Little change in the guard rotation tipped me off. Why didn't you tell me ahead of time? 
You go through years of Ben Hasrath training to hide facial expressions when I wasn't looking. See? Like that. If I'd warned you or the guards, the assassins would have been tipped off. Are you alright? Fine. Hurt myself worse than this fooling around in bed. What if they used poison? Oh, they definitely used poison. Sarkamek. Liquid form. If I hadn't been dosing myself with the antidote, I'd be going crazy and puking my guts up right now. As it is, it stings like shit. But that's about it. I hoped the Ben Hasrath would let you go. They did. Sending two guys with blades against me? That's not a hit. That's a formality. Just making it clear that I'm Talva Shoth. <sighs> Talva fucking Shoth. You acted like a Talva Shoth for years. That didn't change you. Neither does this. That was just a role. This is my life. As one of those. I've killed hundreds of Talvashoth in Saharan. Bandits, murderers, bastards who turn their back on the Kuhn. And now I'm one of them. You're not a Talvashoth. That's a Kunari word, and you don't follow the Kuhn any longer. You're Iron Bull, mercenary captain for the Inquisition. I can live with that. <sighs> anyway, I'll get this cleaned up and let Red know what happened. Boss, whatever I miss, whatever I regret, this is where I want to be. Whenever you need an ass kicked, the Iron Bull is with you. What have you done now? I get it, Seeker. You're still sore after our spat. I'm not a child, Varric. Do not suggest I'm without reason. A peace offering. The next chapter of Swords and Shields. I hear you're a fan. This is your doing. I was hoping you'd be happy about it. Well, if you're not interested, <laughs> you're not interested. Still needs editing anyhow. Wait! <laughs> you're probably wondering what happens to the Night Captain after the last chapter. <gasps> Nothing should happen to her. She was falsely accused. Well, it turns out the guardsman... Don't tell me! <clears throat> this is the part where you thank the Inquisitor. I don't normally give sneak peeks, after all. I... Thank you. Varric's the one you should be thanking. I am but a humble servant to my loyal readers. I wonder if I have time to read the first part. But don't forget to tell all your friends, if you have any. Ah, <sighs> completely worth it. Inquisitor, I was... Do you have a moment? What were you like, before the Anchor? Has it affected you? Changed you in any way? Your mind? Your morals? Your... spirit? If it had, do you really think I'd have noticed? No. That's an excellent point. Why do you ask? You show a wisdom I have not seen since... since my deepest journeys into the ancient memories of the Fade. You are not what I expected. What have I done that's so surprising? You have shown subtlety in your actions. A wisdom that goes against everything I expected. If the Dalish could raise someone with a spirit like yours, have I misjudged them? I don't hold the Dalish up as perfect, but we have something worth honoring. A memory of the ancient ways. Perhaps that is it. I suppose it must be. Most people act with so little understanding of the world, but not you. So what does this mean, Solus? It means I have not forgotten the kiss. Good. Don't go. It would be kinder in the long run. But losing you would...
Arlath Mavanan. <laughs>